For our next talk, I'd like to invite on screen Prashant Javedi, CEO of Flipkart Health Plus, who will speak to us about the future direction of AI for healthcare and e-commerce. Uh, but before we do that, let's hear a little bit about Prashant. He has extensive experience in the healthcare space, spanning business growth, PL responsibilities, supply and partnerships, capital raising, MA, innovation and strategy. And prior to joining Flipkart Health Plus, uh, Prashant was the chief business officer at Apollo Health and Lifestyle Limited. He was responsible for growth, partnerships, and creating cross functional synergies across different customer facing businesses consumer facing businesses and touch points. In the past, he's also served as the CEO of MediBuddy and CBO for MediAssist Group. He holds an MBA degree in finance from Penn State University. And just as a very, very good hands. Um, Prashant will also take questions towards the end of the talk. So please feel free to submit your questions again via the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. Prashant, thank you for joining us so early in the morning like Ajay did. Um, and the screen is all yours. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Ambika. And clearly, this is uh, a tough act to follow, right? The, the world of AR, VR, MR, and now to the reactive world of healthcare. No, but thank you very much, you know, um, you know, for uh, inviting me over. I'm going to jump straight in. I don't have any slides to present, uh, but I would like to essentially talk about um, future directions in e-commerce, specifically AI and healthcare. Uh, firstly, thank you for the kind introductions as well, uh, Ambika. I'm clearly, as you've called out, and aptly clear, I'm not a technologist. Uh, my background's finance with about 18 years in healthcare, Indian healthcare. So for me, trying to see the world through the lens of a consumer on the one important hand, and having known the challenges in Indian healthcare on the other, these have essentially been two founding blocks in shaping my thinking in healthcare. India today, for example, spends about less than $100 per capita on healthcare. And health tech, you know, it's been around for close to a decade and was supposed to be the knight in shining armor to solve the accessibility and affordability conundrum in Indian healthcare. Alas, it's been close to a decade now of health tech. And if you look at the penetration of e-pharmacy in India, it stands at less than 5%. If you look at the penetration of e-diagnostics in India, it stands at less than 1%. Yes, teleconsultations did get a shot in the arm during COVID, but clearly there's a long way to go uh, before it becomes the primary port of call for doctor consultations. So clearly there's something amiss, right? Uh, what's important is, you know, as you think healthcare, as you think it, through the lens of a consumer. It is about seamlessly blending uh, into the consumer's natural and intuitive course of action with minimal change behavior. Uh, it has to be as frictionless as possible versus trying to append the consumer's current behavioral patterns, which is where I think there are a lot of learnings over the last few years in terms of how do you seamlessly blend it in versus trying to think it afresh. The one eternal and worthy question uh, always uh, that you know, uh, one needs to answer in healthcare is saying, how do we nudge people towards good behavior? As we think AI and healthcare, I think once again, through the worldview of a healthcare e-com company, uh, the three key pillars in my mind are as follows. Number one, mapping supply to demand. Number two, predicting demand. And number three, fulfilling demand. So let's peel this, each of these three layers one at a time. As you think of mapping supply to demand, it is also about creating, it's also about solving for supply where uncatered demand exists. A few you know, top-down stats about India and Indian healthcare, we have half a bed per 1,000 people. Who recommends three? We have less than one doctor uh, per 1,000 people. That still makes it a million, over a million doctors, but still you know, less than the who recommended rate. To exacerbate it, we have a concentration of supply in select cities. If I was to overlay from a chronic care medicine standpoint, 80% of chronic care medicine consumption in India um, essentially happens in, or at least they're sold in the top 100 cities, which has less than one sixth of the population. Healthcare is very local, right? You've, you've got to be able to map local demand with local supply um, and leverage the existing capacities. Where AI can essentially help is in identifying pockets where capacities need to be created, not only for the demand that exists today, but essentially as we talk about the layer two and we peel the second layer about as we predict demand, upcoming demand in the future. It is important 
to build focused health tech capabilities to bridge this demand and supply gap and do it at scale. Let me give you a specific example around pharmacy. India, for example, has over a million pharmacies. And that's 10 times the number of pharmacies as I've been made to understand in the US, for example. If you look at it from the point of view of the size of India, we're a third the size um, of the United States, but we still have 10x more pharmacies, but it still does not solve for the needs of its citizens across all of the 20,000 pin codes, AKA zip codes. Uh, E-commerce, for example, is solving this through doorstep delivery. Uh, yes, cold chain still needs to be solved for from a last mile delivery standpoint that hasn't been solved for, but at least the 20,000 pin codes for non-cold chain are being delivered through e-commerce today. India has also evolved um, as has the rest of the world from a D zero, a day zero delivery standpoint. We do hyper-local deliveries. You know, some of us are even doing 10 minutes deliveries for staples and groceries. Uh, albeit of course, chips and Coke end up becoming the most frequent order. Um, uh, we're also experimenting with drones, for example. We recently conducted a pilot where we did a hundred kilometer aerial distance for delivering medicines, uh, albeit it was a middle mile delivery. Um, and we did that in less than an hour. And that 100 kilometer aerial distance was akin to 150 kilometer distance by road. Now, if you think AI, it has a role to play in helping identify and prioritize the orders that need to be delivered and in how much time basis, the urgency, the importance, the distance, also planning the supply architecture from a last mile standpoint, or in terms of architecting drone deliveries. And importantly, as you think of cold chain infrastructure. Um, as you think of insulins, you need cold chain infrastructure. Once again, there is between awareness and availability, one needs to solve those problems, but then overlay it with how do you actually make it happen with cold chain infrastructure. Uh, if you look at medicines specifically, unlike in typical e-com parlance, you order what you like and that, that gets delivered. When you think of medicines, you also, it, you, you order only because your doctors asked you to consume some medicines, which basically means from um, a, a pharmacy marketplace standpoint, it's important for us to verify those prescriptions. Now, in, in a country where still 90% of the prescriptions are handwritten, and many of these are in local languages too, um, AI, we believe, actually has a very big, very important role to play. Krish and Anu, for example, from the Flipkart R&D team out of Seattle, They've rolled up their sleeves and they're helping us with speed, with accuracy in digitizing these prescriptions and at scale. Um, we're stitching together collaborations and partnerships too with like-minded folks um, that are keen to solve this meaningful, impactful problem. Um, pharmacy was one such example. Let me give you an example of diagnostics. Uh, in metros in tier one cities, for example, in India, half of all blood draws now happen at home which means you can actually on an app place a request for a phlebotomist and a phlebotomist would essentially show up in 60 minutes from uh, you requesting for a phlebotomist to show up. And the reports essentially get delivered on your app within six hours electronically. Clearly AI has a role to play here too. How do you optimize rosters and routes for phlebotomists? How do you solve for recruitment and training? Once again, how do you solve for cold chain? Um, you, how, where do you set up collection centers? How do you leverage, once again, drone deliveries for blood samples delivery? How do you leverage the best of point of care testing for screening on the one hand and get a phlebotomist over to show up for you know, a traditional blood draw to test for you know, planning treatments? Um, so this is the first layer, which is about mapping supply to demand. As we take go to step two, which is around predicting demand, um, and this is where the important problem statement of, of, of around how do you nudge people towards good behavior you know, comes in. One second, let me give you an AI example. Uh, I'd love to find a way, uh, and I'm sure there is one, to leverage the identified data sets of say geotagged mobile internet search logs to predict healthcare resource utilization. Say for example, if we could look up two months of search logs preceding a medical visit by a consumer and construct a matrix of so you plug in demographic, semantic, um, and lo location specific features, and in turn predicting when's the next, you know, when's the future medical visit likely. And as you think of some of these, you know, clearly AI has a role to play, uh, a big one at that. 
What AI would, of course, need is large sums of data and rules, of course, on the basis of which it'll learn, it will reason, and it'll self-correct. And which is where you know, some of the work that even the government of India is doing in healthcare comes in very handy. So there is the National Digital Health Mission, which is a government of India agency. It has taken a network approach. Um, the uh, mission has onboarded 250 million citizens. So there are 250 million, what we refer to as ABHA IDs that have been created. ABHA, that stands for Ayushman Bharat Health Account IDs. 200,000 healthcare institutions have registered. 100,000 doctors and healthcare professionals have registered. And this, all of this has happened in a short span of two years. What's important is healthcare records are essentially getting linked. So far about 20 million records have been linked. What this does is it levels the play field. It allows healthcare operators, both traditional as well as new age, to build innovation atop this network, atop this exchange. Um, the good thing is we've got great confidence you know, in, in, term, in, in this initiative because the same team that's actually worked in bringing the cost of data uh, in India uh, down from what was 700 rupees per gigabyte is now down to seven rupees per gigabyte, which is roughly about $10 about seven years back uh, for every gigabyte of data is now down to 10 cents per gigabyte. That's one such initiative and we've seen amazing success that held us in good stead uh, in, in, and allowed us to uh, thrive during COVID with all of the challenges around us. Unified payments interface, UPI, as, as we refer to it. I think today, for example, we have over 7 billion transactions a month happening on UPI, which is essentially an instant real-time payment system, both for peer-to-peer -peer transactions, as well as for person-to-merchant transactions, all through mobile devices. 7 billion transactions, $140 billion uh, a month, and at zero cost to the consumer. That's the punchline. When you think India, you've got to think, think frugal. Even if one were to hope to charge two cents for that transactions, one would actually walk over and physically make that payment. Now that same Teams is actually is, is helping us with the healthcare network, with the healthcare exchange. Uh, the and private operators um, such as Flipkart and others can essentially stitch together APIs and get access to these patient records with the consent of this patient. And look at one simple end use case. You could leverage, you know recent HbA1c results, for example, from the point from the healthcare records that have already been infused into the exchange and make predictions leveraging here around high sugar levels. And then in turn, how do you prevent a diabetic foot? How do you anticipate you know, some of these in advance? And how do you nudge, start nudging people towards good behavior? Alex Wang yesterday spoke about data marketplaces, right? If you look at NDHM, it's democratizing access to electronic health record albeit with the consent of the individual. Now the individual may choose saying either for my, you know, to share her record for the purpose of her own treatment on the one hand, maybe to gain an economic benefit on the other, or ideally for the larger good uh, of contributing to research and invention. Um, great founding blocks to essentially build innovation, build um, AI atop this exchange. Identifying trajectories of anticipated demand basis current utilization and anticipated utilization would be a key AI deliverable. There are so many unfortunate realities. If you look at an end stage renal disease patient in India, both kidneys are failed, which means you've got to be on dialysis. The average lifespan of an Indian with end stage renal disease is about five years. In the West, it's about 20 years post being diagnosed with IESRD. Reasons, a combination of reasons saying, maybe I've been living with it for too long. Maybe I wasn't aware. Maybe I wasn't screened early enough. Maybe I just cannot afford to do, you know, three sessions a week and each session for about four hours. A combination of reasons. So clearly, innovative solutions, affordable solutions, caring solutions in healthcare, that's the need of the AVA. Now, AI, once again, has a key role to play in anticipating this demand, not for good behavior. It's about making healthcare more preventive, more proactive, more personalized. This was the second layer. So the first one was mapping supply to demand. Second one was predicting demand. And third one is fulfilling demand. Healthcare is all about needs. You match, predict, anticipate, and then fulfill anticipated needs. You stitch together local partnerships for fulfillment. AI can help you identify pockets where capacities needs to be created, not only on the basis of paucity of supply today, but the anticipated demand of tomorrow. Health tech has a big role to play in bridging this fulfillment gap between demand and supply. 
in the end analysis, this is a journey of moving healthcare from scheduling based to on tap access to and on tap on tap fulfillment of healthcare. Something we're increasingly getting used to in many other ecosystems outside of healthcare. And I do believe that the power of AI will help us get there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prashant, for bringing healthcare, first of all, to the forefront. I was just messaging you on chat that it's so sad that we need to nudge people towards good behavior in the field of uh, you know, healthcare. That should honestly have been their first thought and their first priority. But thank you for sharing those insights with us. Uh, we do have a few questions for you. Just give me a moment. I get the questions up for you. Um, okay, that's the first one. Uh, what is the positive and negative societal impact for health care digitization? So if you look, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be Ambika, about how we leverage digitized data. From a positive impact standpoint, like I said on, on, on in this earlier in the session as well, it is about nudging people towards good behavior. It is about preventive healthcare. It's about proactive healthcare. It is about personalized healthcare. Uh, you know, the fact is that many surgeons still have to make a call uh, on the, and eighty percent of the calls that they essentially make um, is not on the basis of data, on and the basis of data saying, "Hey, listen, what happened to similar patients having to undergo similar problems, similar surgeries as before?" Eighty percent of the decision is without having access to some of this prior data about similar patients. Uh, so it is about the positive impact is about keeping them healthy. It's about saving lives. The negative impact, once again, and at the end of the day, it's about you and me deciding how do we leverage this digitized data. The negative impact is going to be saying, if we end up unfortunately driving unwarranted, unnecessary consumerization through a combination of fear and desire, and unfortunately increasing the healthcare burden further, that would be the negative impact. So I think it'll boil down to, is, is digitization important? Absolutely. Is it about getting, leveraging, you know, and deploying AI atop this data with a set of rules that are unbiased? Absolutely. Uh, but importantly, how do you, you know, make sure that you, you know, you, you balance the fine line of making sure that you don't go too far side and leverage it for positive impact? Thanks, Vishan. Um, we know that India is a very diverse country, right? So how can we ensure diversity and inclusion of consumers while we're building AI for healthcare? Well, you know, AI is, is, is biased only to the data and rules that we feed it with. Um, and on that basis, it'll reason, it'll self-correct. Now, it is up to us what we feed it with, what, you know, the comprehensive of, comprehensiveness of data and the rules. And as long as they're diverse, they're inclusive, they're unbiased, I think we're, we're on the right path. Um, it, once again, you know, thinking you know, from a Flipkart first standpoint, the good thing is that 65% of our user base in this country comes from tier two, tier three, and tier four cities. And that you know, de facto helps drive diversity, helps drive inclusion, um, and something that's as important and noble as healthcare. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Prashant. I think that's all the time we have uh, for today. But thank you for sharing these perspectives on AI for healthcare and e-commerce. We wish you and the team the very best. We're rooting for you. And we're hoping to hear more from Flipkart Health Plus as we go forward. Amen to that. Thank you very much, Ambika. Thank you for joining us. Have a good rest of the day.